the kids, Charlie Abuso again. Uh, Thermochem class four, we're gonna do notes 77 and 96. And gotta have a calculator, reference table. Don't be lazy, right? You gotta have this stuff in order to do the work. You can have something to write on in some paper so that you can uh, actually do the work. Don't be lazy, be happy and excited. This is Thermochem, here we go. How many joules are released when one mole of sodium hydroxide dissolves in water? Now, the first question that comes to mind probably is, I don't know what the heck is going on. And, and here's a hint. When you say, I don't know how to do this, I wonder what Charlie Arbusa would do in this moment. I can't imagine I will ever figure out how to do this problem. I don't know how to do it. I, 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 table I. Table I is just chock full of answers. So when you're stuck in a thermal chem question, go to table I. Now this question says, how many joules are released when one mole of sodium hydroxide dissolves in water? And there's little pictures to help you understand. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic solid. It's a white crystal. It looks like salt, but it tastes like death. Put it in your mouth and it's gonna dissolve in the saliva and it's gonna create something called sodium hydroxide uh, aqueous, which is a base. Bases are the opposites of acid. So if you actually ate this, it would form a base in your mouth and dissolve your tongue. But what happens is the sodium hydroxide crystal goes into water and it busts open and you end up with positive negative ions floating around in the water. This is called either salvation, S-O-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Um, sometimes it's called ionization where the ionic compound busts open into loose mobile ions. Now, what do we look on table I? Well, down here, right near the bottom, I'm gonna to try to put my finger on it. I'm gonna fold it over so I can hold it a little easier, but right near the bottom, sodium hydroxide goes into water forming sodium ions and hydroxide ions, and it has a delta H of 44.51, a negative delta H. So, oh my gosh, what happened here? I guess there's the answer, right? 44.51 kilojoules. So that's kilojoules. The question says how many joules? So to convert this, we put 44.51 kilojoules over one. And we remember there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. Kilojoules cancel, do the multiplication. And so the answer comes out like this. This stuff is actually scary to make. When you put this into water, the water can get so much heat so fast, it can sometimes boil and splash, and it's really dangerous to the skin. We have to make this usually in very, very cold water, and we make it a little bit at a time. If you wanna make some strong sodium hydroxide, you have to put just a little bit of sodium hydroxide in the water at a time, because so much heat comes out, and it warms it up, and it makes it dangerous. I hate to make this stuff. It's a little fun, too. All right. How many joules, see it's underlying, that's pay attention. How many joules are absorbed when one mole of sodium chloride dissolves in water? And you're saying to yourself, probably, I don't have any freaking idea how to do this. I wonder why he thinks I can do this. I don't know how to do this. I wonder what he thinks I'm supposed to do with a problem like this. I wonder, huh? I wonder. So right down here, right near the bottom, right near the bottom of table I, sodium chloride goes into water and it forms sodium and chlorine ions. It ionizes in water. How many joules? Well, table I tells us that when one mole of sodium chloride goes into water, it absorbs 3.88 kilojoules. 3.88 kilojoules, it's right there. Put your finger on it. Look, I'm gonna put my finger right on it. Look, yeah, that's kind of like the answer, but the question says joules. So you have to convert kilojoules to joules. Kilos are big, joules are little, there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. 3.88 kilojoules over one, and we're gonna multiply it by the conversion factor. 1,000 joules equals a kilojoule. We need the kilojoules in the denominator, they cancel, bada bing, bada boom. This is not hard. This is a one step unit conversion math. The answer, you just put your finger in a box and then you do a conversion. It's new, this is new, but it's not hard. Don't get excited, calm down, sit back down, we're gonna do some more. All right, here we go. How many kilojoules 
of energy are released when one mole of lithium bromide is dissolved in water. I wonder what I'm gonna do. Table I. Lithium bromide is the second from the bottom. See it? Lithium bromide goes in the water, forms lithium cations and bromine anions. And what is that delta H? Minus 48.53, is it? Yeah, minus 48.83. That's the answer. That was easy. That was easy. Just put your finger in the box. What's the next question though? We're gonna con con continue. This is where it gets a little more dicey and fun. What happens if you put 11.9 moles? I think that's supposed to say moles. Yes. I'm gonna change it right now. I apologize. This should say moles. And I think it says moles in your notes. Oh, it's so hard to be perfect. I don't even try really. I'm sorry, I mean, I would just cross it out on the board if you were with me. When you dissolve 11.9 moles of lithium bromide into water, how many kilojoules are released? Well, let's look at table I again. What's table I say? It says when one mole of lithium bromide is dissolved in water, it releases 45, I'm sorry, 48.83. What is this number? It's, it's elusive, 48.83. So let's set up a mole ratio because you know what's really cool? The ratio of lithium bromide to lithium ions to bromine ions is also in connection with the energy. When one mole of lithium bromide is dissolved in water, a certain amount of energy, 48.83 kilojoules is released. Remember how we did stoichiometry math? One mole is to the other. Well, this time we're gonna do moles to energy. When one mole of lithium bromide is dissolved in water, it releases 48.83 kilojoules. Well, what if we, we made it 11.9? This proportion has to be every mole releases that much energy. So we can make a proportion. Well, if 11.9 moles dissolved, X kilojoules. We just cross multiply and divide and we can figure out the answer to this. So it's gonna be X equals 48.83 times 11.9. And the answer pops out to be with three significant figures. Table I is going to connect the mole ratio with the energy. The thermochemistry is in the mole ratio now. It's not just moles to moles to moles to moles. It's also in conjunction with the energy. It works the same way. Try some more. How much energy in joules is absorbed when 52.61 moles of KNO3 dissolves? Well, what the heck am I gonna do now? Well, I'm gonna go to table I and KNO3 is the very, I don't know how to make this show you better. KNO3 goes into water and it absorbs, it looks like 34.89 kilojoules. This is how much energy is, in, is joules. So let's set this up. What's the mole ratio? The mole ratio of KNO3 to energy, one mole, when one mole of this dissolves, 34.89 kilojoules is absorbed. But what if we have this crazy number of moles, 52.61 moles of it and goes into water? How much energy is gonna get absorbed? It's a proportion. The, the moles is in proportion to the energy. One mole is in proportion to 34.89 kilojoules. That means 52.61 moles is gonna be in proportion to another number of kilojoules. We cross multiply. One times X equals 38.89, 34.89 times 52.61. It's a lot of numbers, 34. I'm not even sure that number's right. Let me get my calculator. 34.89 times 52.61. Yeah, really? 34 times 53. Yeah, that's right. I assumed, I assumed it would be a lot bigger, but I was wrong, I checked it, that's okay. Four significant figures, four significant figures. 1,836 kilojoules. The question says joules though. Question says joules, so at the bottom, we have to convert that to joules. 1,836 kilojoules, every kilojoule is 1,000 joules. So it's 1,836 times 1,000. So it's 1,836,000 joules. Nobody cares. I know you don't care right now. 
what you're showing is you can follow the patterns. You can follow the ratios of moles to energy. You can do some simple math and you can pay attention to the question. And when the answer comes out with the units called kilojoules, you have the sense to convert them into joules. This is a mental exercise. This is not even that hard. You know, some weird letters and numbers and stuff, but you just put them in the formula and the answer pops out. We're doing the same math over and over. Now, here's a picture of a Big Mac, something I never eat. Teenagers tend to eat Big Macs. Big Macs are awful for you. First of all, there's so much salt in that thing. If I had it, I might have a heart attack right on the spot because salt gives me high blood pressure and there's so much salt. Fast food's terrible. <sighs> Plus, it's a gigantic number of calories. I actually thought it was going to be a bigger number. I'm not sure it's right, but that's the picture I found on Google, so that's the number I'm going to use. What unit of energy is food measured in? Do you ever look at your food labels? You should. Does it ever say kilojoules or joules? No, I don't. What's it say? It says food calories. Now, this is a mess right here. Food calories are calories that have a capital letter C, capital C calories. Unfortunately, it's gonna get real confusing. There's a scientific value of energy, which has a name that sounds just like calorie. It's called calorie, but it's with a lowercase c. Okay, now this is tricky, right? There's calories and then there's calories and they sound alike. Food calories are actually capital C calories. They're technically called kilocalories. There's a thousand little scientific calories in a kilocalorie. Now, a long time ago, when the United States government said, we're gonna have uh, nutritional labels, we're gonna put numbers that people can read on the nutritional label so they know what they're actually eating, and there's all kinds of numbers. There's salt, there's sugar, there's calories, there's ingredients. They decided to go with food calories, which technically in science are called kilocalories. But they don't want to write kilocalories because it sounds metric and nobody in America really understands that. So they said, let's just call them calories with a capital C. And that'll sort of stand for kilocalorie. So when we eat food, when we eat calories, we're really eating kilocalories. We don't call them that. We just call them calories and it sounds, but technically there's a scientific unit that's small called a calorie and a food calorie, which is really big. In our class, the food calorie is technically uh, in blue there, a kilocalorie, kilocalorie. So look what we, I did this for you. It's not in the notes. 540 food calories or kilocalories. In every calorie, there's a thousand cal. Now I'm gonna use C-A-L for the scientific calorie, and I'm gonna use capital C for the food calorie or kilocalorie, otherwise we'll go crazy. If we're talking, we're gonna to have to say food calorie or capital C calorie or cal, otherwise we won't know what we're talking about. But in a Big Mac, there's technically 540,000 calories or cal but there's 540 kilocalories or food calories. It's a pain in the neck. There's no getting around this. This one is a pain in the neck, but a kilo or not a kilo. It's either a, a thousand more or, or not. Don't make it a big deal. So we have four units of energy right now. You know what they are? We have calorie with a lowercase, scientific cal, or food calorie. And we have joule and kilojoule. Now, these are important equalities that we can make from these that we're going to have to keep track of, all right? Underneath table B, we're going to write this. There's a little bit of room. One cal is going to equal 4.18 joules. That's an important, important equality. A thousand joules is a kilojoule, a thousand cals is a kilocalorie. But the first one is really important. Now, I wanna remind you in a moment what 4.18 joules is. I love this picture too, isn't it? It's so stupid, it's a fish jumping out of water. I love the specific heat capacity constant of water. Why, why? Well, if the water stays at a fairly steady temperature, the fish has a nice easy life, but think about it. The specific heat capacity constant for water is this number, 4.18 joules per gram dot Kelvin. You don't even have to know that number. You just put your finger in a box. What does it mean? 
That means it takes 4.18 joules of energy to make a single gram of water change temperature by one Kelvin or one centigrade, either adding it and making the water hotter, or you can remove that energy to make the water a little bit colder. The specific heat capacity constant for water is 4.18 joules per gram per calorie, per, per Kelvin, tired. Now, watch what we do here for number 9091. It takes 4.18 joules to make a gram of water change temperature, higher or lower. And guess what? It takes one small C calorie to make one gram of water change temperature by one degree centigrade or one Kelvin. Now, joules is a little more metric. It works in a few more formulas, but a cal and 4.18 joules is the same amount of energy. You wanna change the temperature of a gram of water, you gotta give it a small cal of energy, or you could give it 4.18 joules. These numbers are, are equal. We can use them in conversion factors. So we have four units of energy now, four. Cal, calorie, joule, kilojoule. So we're gonna go back and forth. Let's see what this is. Looks like we're gonna raise the temperature of, of water by one degree. It says, it takes 354 cal to make 354 grams of water at seven degrees centigrade change to eight. That makes sense. To make one gram change by one degree is one cal. To make two grams change by a degree, it takes two cal. To make 354 grams of water change by one degree, it takes 354 cal. How many joules is that? How many joules is 354 cal? So, Let's set it up, 354 cal over one. And now we have to make a conversion factor with joules and cal. And as it turns out, there's 4.18 joules in a cal, the cals cancel. And when you multiply this across and you round to three significant figures, this number of joules. Now, if you have 354 grams of water, that's a little bit more than a Celsius can. If it's at seven degrees centigrade and you want to warm it up, it takes a certain amount of energy. How much energy? Well, it depends on what kind of units you want. It takes 354 cals or it takes 1,480 joules. They're the same thing. All we did here was one step unit conversion. We changed cals into joules. Now, here we have more cals, but we're going to convert it into kilojoules. Now, this is not going to be as easy, this is not a one-step conversion, right? We don't know the units for cal to kilojoules. Look what we have to do. We're gonna, oh look, I like this picture too. I like counting calories. Now that's capital C food calories and that I believe is a puffin. Puffins are cool, puffins are cereal. 3,429 cal over one. And then first we're gonna turn it into joules. So, 4.18 joules is a cal, cals will cancel, and with four significant figures, that's how many joules it is. Now let's see if we can convert that into kilojoules. Nope, I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna do it right now. I don't like to write on these slides much because I'm not a good drawer, but we'll do that right now. We'll take this number, one, four, three, three, oh, joules over one. And I remember because I wrote down underneath table B and I have it in my head that there's a thousand of these joules, a thousand joules. I'm just talking slow now because I'm having trouble writing is the same equal to one kilojoule. So we got this, the joules in the numerator cancel the joules in the denominator. And when we do the math, it turns into 14.33 kilojoules. We only get four significant figures. So I had to dump that last zero because I have a decimal. So that's actually the answer here. This is just a couple of simple conversions. You have the conversion factors, you just do the math. It's not even that hard. You're gonna love this. I love thermochem. All right. When one mole of sodium chloride dissolves in water, 
the delta H is 3.88 kilojoules. How do I know that? Let me show you. Go to table I, right near the bottom, sodium chloride right above my hand, sodium chloride goes into water, and there it is, positive 3.88 kilojoules. That's the energy that's absorbed. Let me clear all my drawings. I don't know why they're still there. Where's my clearing button? I wanna get rid of those drawings. Hello, come back. Clear all drawings. Clear all drawings, there we go. Convert that amount of energy, 3.80 kilojoules, into cals and then food calories, both. So here we go on the math. We're gonna start out on our starting point. We have 3.88 kilojoules. First, we're gonna to have to convert that into joules. So 1,000 joules is a kilojoule. That turns into 3,880 joules. We're gonna convert that into cals, right? Because we know that one cal is 4.18 joules, the joules cancel, so that equals 928 cals. And now we're gonna convert those cals into food calories, and we see that one calorie is 1,000 cals, so it's not very much energy at all. When you put sodium chloride into water, it actually makes the water get a little colder. You never knew that, right? You've put salt in water before, you never noticed that? Why would you? It's hardly any energy. It doesn't get very cold at all. It's measurable with a good thermometer, but probably not by your fingertip, right? You know, 3.80 kilojoules is not that much. A mole of salt is 58 grams of salt. That's a, you know, tablespoon of salt in a big pot of water. You're not gonna notice it, but it does change temperature. And the kilojoules can be converted into joules. Joules can be converted into cows. Cows can be converted into food calories, but not in a straight line. You gotta do a couple of different steps. We don't have, we don't have an equality for everything. We don't have a, a, an equality for kilojoules and food calories. Kilojoules can become joules. Joules can become cows. Cows can become calories. Just a couple of steps. When one mole of methane combusts, how many kilojoules are released? How would I know? I don't know that. Actually, I do know this one, 890.4. How do I know that? It's right here in the very top line. When one mole of methane combusts, the mole ratio of one mole of methane produces 890.4 kilojoules. Convert that number into 890.4 kilojoules, convert it into joules and then cows and calories. Same exact math we just did, right? So we have kilojoules, we're gonna get rid of them. Kilojoules is where we're starting, over one. We're gonna multiply that by the conversion factor. A thousand joules is one kilojoule, and we can convert that easily into joules. Now, those joules we bring down to the next line because now we wanna convert joules into cows. Our conversion factor is 4.18 joules is a cal. The joules cancel, so it's equal to 213,000 cows, we bring that down to the last line and we're gonna convert that now into food calories. And we have to remember the, the equality that there's a thousand cows in a food calorie. So this turns into 213 food calories. These are simple, straightforward conversions. You have the equalities you just wrote on the table B. Nobody really cares about the answers. Look, I don't even care about these answers, but I can do them. They're doable, you can do them. You have to pay attention to your units. You need a calculator. It's an exercise in thinking. It's not even an answer thinking. It's what's the conversion factor? How are they connected? Don't make stuff up. Don't make up equalities that don't exist. You have a set of equalities, you gotta work with them. It's like a puzzle. You can't just tape a puzzle together in, in the shape and picture you want. They, it fits together a certain way. This fits together a certain way too. And we're done. It's another class. All right, time to check out. Listen, don't quit on yourself. This is hard, but you can.